Hello and welcome to my course. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Shanika and today we will be discussing coming out of the coronavirus with confidence. We can all agree that this coronavirus has just taken us all by storm. There are so many new realities from working from home or unemployment, homeschooling, quarantine, probably some extra pounds there. We've gained some weight with those quarantine snacks. But we've been forced into a new normal with lockdown, masks, and a crazy COVID-19 cleaning regimen. We're afraid of getting the virus, we're afraid of our loved ones getting the virus, and the news is only making it worse. The coronavirus has devastated the world as we know it. Domestic violence, child abuse, anxiety, depression have all been on the rise. People all around the world are fearful about their future. We are exhausted and feel powerless to change things. But this is not your fault. Let me explain to you a really interesting fact. The coronavirus has put us all into this fight or flight state in our minds. This is meant to be very fast, like when you jump out of the way of a moving vehicle without even thinking about it. If we stay at this heightened sense of danger and it doesn't go away, this overwhelms our brains, which then overflows with hormones, and this sends us into a state of depression and other mental illnesses. We have been living in a crisis for months. I mean, this literally kills brain cells. None of us have been ourselves lately. We really have to take care of ourselves to get through this. I want you to know that you have more power than you think. You can actually take control of this situation, boost your energy so that you can stop this downward spiral and be happy. And so you can take care of your families and maybe help other people who are in need during this time. I know exactly what you're going through. I am going through this with you as we speak. I have five energetic kids. We live in an apartment in Brazil, 6,000 miles away from my friends and family in the United States. Due to the coronavirus, our small business has been shut down for over two and a half months and we've been in quarantine. Just a couple weeks ago, the state of Rio de Janeiro instituted a strict lockdown and this was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I fell into depression. I was crying, I couldn't get out of bed, I was a total wreck and just run down by this whole thing. I couldn't take any more. But I refused to let the coronavirus win. I know what you're going through. It wasn't easy, but I had to get out of bed and deal with all of the emotions, anxiety, parenting, finances. I had to wipe away the tears and get going. Making this course brought me so much joy and healing. I was able to get out of my head and spend that energy creating something I know a lot of women can relate to. I'm giving this course away for free because we're all in this together and I honestly want to help. I personally used all of the tools in this program and they're all psychologists tested and approved. I know they're going to help you too. Let's bring some joy and peace back to your life. Let's get started. All right, let's get ready to rock and roll. Before we get started, I'm going to go over a few housekeeping notes. First of all, this program can actually be listened to. If you're like me and you like to listen to audiobooks or podcasts, this is a great option. You can watch it, that's great. You should take notes too, but it's not necessary. So please feel free to let this program play in your headphones or in the car. Um, some other options are in these video settings here in YouTube. You can actually adjust the playback speed. And this is something I do a lot in my audiobooks, so I'm giving the option to you as well. And it's a great option here on YouTube. So I'm gonna quickly explain how to do it. First, you have to pause this video and then look up in your right hand corner and you'll see three little white dots. You tap on those dots and then there'll be a few options. And in there, that's where you can adjust your playback speed. Also, there are subtitles and there's a few other things in there, but in this video, we have subtitles in Portuguese and in English since we live in Brazil. Okay, so this is a picture of me and my family. We have five kids and we've been living in Brazil for two and a half years. We would love to connect with you guys on Instagram. So after this course, please message me there and let me know what you think of this program. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well because this helps us keep making free videos like this one. Coming out of coronavirus with confidence. Here are 20 highly effective, empowering actions you can take right now to boost your mood, improve self-confidence, and bring harmony back into your life. 
Just sit back, relax, and listen. You don't have to do all of these 20 steps. Maybe just pick your top five and start from there. Regaining confidence after depression, recession, or pandemic requires intention and a commitment to reinvent a new sense of self. The major areas that are involved are restoring self-image, managing self-talk, replacing negative talk, and reviving purpose. In essence, you have to go to work on changing your relationship with yourself and how you interact with the world around you. It's easy to minimize the things we struggle with and feel helpless, but I have put together a powerful list of things you can do to be intentional about getting back on track and living the life you love. Number one, self-talk. Get aware of it. Number one, negative self-talk. Get aware of it. I'm not asking you to get rid of it. I'm asking you to get aware of it. Replace unhealthy thoughts with positive, balanced thoughts. When the world around you is in chaos, sometimes we internalize it and, it and we let it get us down. We start to focus on limitations, shutdowns, and problems. We ignore the many positive things around us. It's important to remember there's always something to be grateful for. This doesn't mean just telling yourself, you're great or you can do it. You should look at your incorrect thoughts and challenge them. Ask yourself, is this true? What evidence do I have? Do other people view me this way? I started to believe that my best days were behind me. You may be holding on to thoughts that stand in the way of you getting any peace of mind. Realize that my best days are behind me is a lie. There are many negative self-talk lies going on in our heads right now. While they feel true, those lies are not true unless you make it true. If you become aware of those negative thoughts, you can stop and replace them. The mind is a powerful tool. The more the subconscious rehearses negative things, the more you will find that those things are happening. Number two, look at your level of self-judgment. If you are having trouble finding anything you like about yourself, you can be pretty certain that you're judging yourself harshly. Consider how you would judge a friend who is expressing that they hate themselves or they don't like any actions they're taking. If you're like me, you will give all the grace in the world to anyone else, but when it comes to you, you just can't let yourself off the hook. I recommend dealing with yourself graciously and begin to evaluate those self-judging tendencies. Number three, act positive. More than just thinking positive, you have to put it into action. Action actually is the key to developing self-confidence. It's one thing to learn to think positive, but when you start acting on it, you change yourself one action at a time. You are what you do. So if you change what you do, you change who you are. Act in a positive way. Take action instead of telling yourself you can't. Be positive. Talk to people in a positive way. Put your energy into your actions. You'll soon start to notice a difference. Just like a car needs fuel before it can start, your thoughts are the fuel we need to take the next action. Just like a car needs fuel before it can start, our thoughts are the fuel we need to take the next step, and the next step, and the next step. But results come down to action. Even a fueled up car needs to leave the parking garage in order to get anywhere. Action is what determines whether or not we accomplish what we set out to do. Here are some action steps. Share your goals with others. Exercise. Hey, don't roll your eyes, but we need to get off the couch and make our muscles sore and sweat and push our body. Confidence also comes from achieving what you didn't think you could do. Stop slouching and stand up tall. Hey, we all probably just sat up in our car, didn't we? <laughs> Unless you're physically incapable, when you stand up tall, you're not only projecting confidence, you demand it. An amazing thing happens when you feel confident. Others treat you in a confident manner. Pull your shoulders back, put your chest up, and that stomach in. Surround yourself with positive people, supportive people who encourage and inspire you. Ask and accept help. When you have somebody that is rooting for you, you will tend to hold more accountability for your forward progress. Get a life coach, ask a friend or relative to be your accountability partner, or find a group of like-minded people, or do all of the above. Write in your journal every day. Envision it being done, whatever that is. Vision it in your mind. Last one is stay consistent. Things won't change overnight. Baby steps. 
Number four, keep a thankful journal every day. This is important, guys. This helps you get your thoughts on paper instead of dwelling on them because you're keeping them inside. However, don't just write about your negative thoughts. Also write about the positive thoughts too. That's really important. Heck, start a blog. This is a crazy time and it will be very interesting to keep track of how you got through your days, who you served, how you interpret what's going on around you. Seriously, your kids and grandkids will really want to read this someday. We are a family of seven living in an apartment. Quarantine has made our space feel smaller and smaller every day. Keeping a journal has given me a newfound space to be creative, free to think, expand my mind. It was, it's been a really helpful tool. Write down at least 10 things you're thankful for every day in your journal. Especially if you don't have a lot of time to write, gratitude is the most powerful, important exercise. You will notice a big shift in your attitude. It can be simple things like the ability to inhale a full breath of fresh air. You can also write down the things you are thankful for from your past. Bouncing back can be tough. Force yourself to take inventory of everything that is going well for you. When I was struggling to come up with things I was thankful for, I began to write things I hoped for in the future as if they had already happened. So I wrote things like, I'm thankful that my business is going well. I'm thankful that my health is on track. I'm thankful that I'm learning so much. Remind yourself that despite all of the problems going on around you, you are unique, special, and a valuable person, and that you deserve to feel good. Talk with a family member, friend who remembers the good times when you guys were happy, having fun, and feeling good about yourself. Number five, rediscover your passions and interests. When the world around you is in crisis mode, it's easy to lose interest in what you used to enjoy. We have stopped enjoying life and now are constantly counting the number of people that are dying every day in countries around the world. Return to your interest, hobbies, and passions. Doing things that you enjoy helps you regain confidence. You may need to redefine your passions and interests. Start by writing down what you enjoy, what you enjoyed in the past, things you've always wanted to do, and your positive qualities. Use this as a starting point. For example, maybe you used to be passionate about art or painting, but stopped because of overwhelm. Now start painting again, which will really help lift your mood. Number six, look for inspiration in audiobooks or YouTube. Replace the negative crisis coverage on the news with funny books or podcasts. Throughout the day, surround yourself with positive, inspiring, or funny things. This can help you let go of negativity and stop dwelling on the news. Take a break from the news. Seriously, guys, the news is meant to disturb you. It's what they get paid to do. They play on fears, our most powerful emotion. At the same time, governments are taking drastic measures because if they don't, they'll get blamed for the consequences. Don't let this bring you down. I have personally completely stopped watching the news altogether. Seriously. I check the world numbers every couple of days, but that's it. It has been so cleansing and frustrating. And trust me, guys, if they find a cure, you'll know about it. Otherwise, all that news is just negativity and it's not necessary. Books can also do a lot of good. They get you out of your own head. They inspire, motivate, and educate you. Listening to books helps me feel productive because I can get a bunch of stuff done while I'm learning new things and focusing on positive ideas. Empower yourself with knowledge. If you're up late and you can't sleep, picking up a book or turning on an audiobook can really help calm your mind and maybe even get you to sleep. This is like way better than calling your friend at 2 a.m. in the morning, trust me. Audiobooks are great too because if you're like me and you get tired when you read, it gives you another option to make life easier. So it's great to listen to audiobooks when you're driving in your car, cleaning, or cooking. I have a subscription to audible.com, but your local library is an awesome resource for audiobooks and YouTube actually has full length books for free on YouTube as well. Another way I like to use YouTube for inspiration is actually searching inspirational videos. They usually help me get dialed in and refocused. I love watching inspirational workout videos, even when I'm not working out, guys, seriously. I love hearing a coach encouraging, yelling at people, you can do it. It really, really actually was one of the main things that would get me out of the bed in the morning. Actually, maybe it was more like the afternoon when I was like depressed and couldn't get out of bed. 
it really inspired me to see people running, sweating, and working hard. I literally sat up, put my feet on the ground, and got up after watching these videos. Whenever you start to feel down, worried, or fearful, read something inspirational or look at something funny. This can really help you stay positive and change your mood. Here are some of my favorite books. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. A New Earth, also by Eckhart Tolle. Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein. Feelings Buried Alive by Carol Truman. What I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey. Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. All of these authors, like all of their books are amazing. If you wanna learn about the law of attraction, Gabby's books are amazing. Anything you read from Oprah, she is an inspirational powerhouse. Brene Brown's books, like her research is mind blowing. And Rachel Hollis, she's just an inspirational bombshell. So these are some of my favorites, but um, I mean, check out other books by these authors. They really are inspirational and powerful and so uplifting. Number seven, listen to music that encourages positivity. Music is so powerful. From love songs to hip hop, it's so easy to just turn up your favorite song and it lifts your mood. You can dance in the kitchen or put on yoga music at bedtime. It's important to find uplifting music that soothes your soul. Don't listen to negative messages that can bring you down, but this is just a great quick fix. It's one of my favorites. Number eight, get your eating, sleeping, and self-care under control and in a routine. Eating well and exercising boosts endorphins, the body's natural opiates, which make you feel good on the inside and stimulates a more positive mood. Our bodies operate much like a machine. If we don't make sure that the proper maintenance is in place, the machine will not continue to function sufficiently. This might seem obvious, but pay attention to your personal hygiene. Take a shower. A quick revitalizing shower can really change your mood, but also brush your hair, trim your nails, and so on. Take care of yourself. Better yet, take a nice, hot, soothing, relaxing bath. Wear clean clothes that make you feel good about yourself, whether that's jeans or a nice ironed collar and shirt. Eat clean, good foods. Make meals a special time, even if you're eating alone. Turn off the TV, set the table, light a candle, take a moment to feel grateful. Exercise regularly. This is one of the most empowering activities we can do. A lot of us have gained a few extra quarantine pounds. We've all heard of the quarantine 15, and it's true, we've been stuck indoors eating comfort food, but it's okay. All you have to do, especially if you're just coming off the couch, is walk a few times a week, if you can, and you'll see the benefits. YouTube is also another great resource for free home workout ideas. I personally love the Nike Training Club app. It's free, it's amazing, highly recommend that. Ensure that you're getting enough sleep. Plug your phone in across the room so you don't fall into that Instagram black hole at night and end up staying up way too late. Guys, this is like a bad habit, seriously. Plug in your phone across the room, check it before you go to bed, before you even go in your room, and then put it away because we just all get lost and waste precious time and hours of much needed rest. When you sleep, your brain has a chance to detox, release hormones, and boost alertness and mental performance. Make sure you're getting plenty of rest, especially if you've got kids to deal with, working from home, school schedules, you're gonna need patience. And for me, patience is directly related to sleep. Number nine, clean your house, closet, and garage. I'm serious, this is gonna make you feel so good. One thing that is amazing is getting your home life in order. Doing something that you've been putting off feels great. It's one of my most favorite feelings is getting stuff done. For those of you who love to travel, you know how great it is when you go to a hotel because it's free of clutter, it smells clean, and the environment is in order. Getting some order in your life will increase your sense of power over your environment and will give you a sense of accomplishment. If you can't control anything else in your life, at least you can control your personal space. I highly recommend Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Get your husband or kids involved, turn up the music, and get to work. Number 10, get your finances under control. This is a hard one because the world is now in an economic crisis. At no fault of your own, many of us now have reduced hours, are unemployed, or out of work due to government shutdowns or COVID-19 regulations. Financial trouble can really take the wind out of your sails. 
Fight back by creating a plan. Stick to it the best you can. Here are some ideas. See if your government has any financial support programs. If you lose your job through no fault of your own, they might offer some support. Check local requirements. Check with your employer on options for continuing health care insurance while you're out of work. Google yourself. Search for your name on Google to see what potential employers are going to view when they check you out. Make sure everything that comes up in the search results is appropriate. Clean up your social media accounts, revamp your resume, update your LinkedIn profile, connect with your network, meaning professional and personal contacts, practice interviewing, and work on a budget. If you need budgeting advice, I recommend Dave Ramsey's book or course on gaining financial freedom. Taking back a sense of control over your finances is akin to taking back control over your life. This isn't easy, but do what you can with what you have. Number 11, connect with people. Wear safe and appropriate, of course. Be nice to people and do nice things for them. Strike up a conversation from a distance with the delivery guy. Invite a neighbor to go on a walk, call a friend who's sick, get involved with a local charity. Putting a smile on someone's face is bound to put a smile on yours. Get others on board. Tell your friends and relatives what you're going through and ask for their advice and support. Perhaps they too have similar problems, in which case you might be able to form a Zoom support group. Don't be shy, most people want help. Spend more time with those you hold near and dear. In person might not be an option right now, but online channels work great. I love using the Marco Polo video messaging app. We also have a YouTube channel to show our friends and family in the USA all of the things we're doing here in Brazil. Try to enlarge your social circle by making an effort to meet and befriend new people, possibly through Facebook or WhatsApp groups. Befriending people takes time, baby steps. Avoid people and places that treat you badly or make you feel bad about yourself. Number 12, set a small goal and achieve it. People often make the mistake of shooting for the moon and then when they fail, they get discouraged. Instead, shoot for something that's much more achievable. Set a goal you know you can achieve and then achieve it. I totally do this. I write simple things on my list like take a shower and get dressed just so I can feel good about crossing it off. You'll feel good about achieving your small goals as well. Now, set another small goal and achieve that. The more you achieve small goals, the better you'll be at it and the better you'll feel. Soon you'll be setting bigger goals and achieving those as well. Being a person of your word and doing what you set out to do is also a big confidence builder. Change a small habit, not a big one like quitting smoking, just a small one, like journaling or waking up 10 minutes earlier, something small that you know you can do. When you've accomplished it, you'll feel like a million bucks. Number 13, focus on solutions. If you're a complainer or focus on problems, it's easy to get sucked into the negativity and stress of things going on right now. Focusing on solutions instead of problems is one of the best things you can do for your confidence and your mental health. Here's four steps to problem solving. Number one, define. See the problem for what it actually is. For example, the coronavirus is something we can't change. Number two, own. Take ownership of only the things you can realistically control. For example, you can only control how you follow safety guidelines and not what anyone else does. Number two, see the truth and the path to this situation becomes clear. Another example, this will not last forever. What can I learn from the coronavirus? Number four, balance, see the bigger picture. Focusing on these current issues can keep you stuck in a rut. Faith in God or a higher power really comes into play here. God knows the big picture. Having faith in his plan will keep you moving forward. Take this advice. Don't react to the events in your life but react to your thinking about the event. Number 14, accept what you have been going through. Going through depression or anxiety doesn't make you weak or a failure, but it can make you feel that way and do a number on your self-esteem. Just because you have gone through a rough patch doesn't make you less of a person. The fact that you have overcome it makes you a stronger person. Let go of what you can control and keep building. Remind yourself that you are strong and have accomplished many important things in your life. Coming out of the coronavirus with confidence is a great starting point to rebuild your life. Number 15, give yourself time. Your confidence won't be back overnight, and that's okay. Take it one step at a time and one day at a time. 
Each time you step out of your house, try something new, think a positive thought, journal, exercise, you are slowly building your way to a more enjoyable life. The coronavirus isn't over yet. It may take months or even years to rebuild your life and peace of mind. Don't get discouraged if it takes you longer. This pandemic is serious, and even after you have overcome it, rebuilding your enthusiasm about life can take time. Number 16, consider therapy. If deep depression persists, talking to a professional can be life-changing. A therapist or psychologist is someone you can trust who can help you learn how to navigate your emotions if you are unable to by yourself. Your therapist can help you learn how to replace negative thoughts with positive ones. They also can give you tips on how to start socializing again, how to try new things, how to accept what you've been through. This is especially important if you've lost a loved one and are dealing with heavy grief. Finding a therapist is not a sign of weakness. Professional help is great. Number 17 is one of my favorites, mindfulness and meditation. You might have some questions though. What is mindfulness? Well, Mindfulness is the ability to be fully present, aware of where you are and what you're doing, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around you. What is meditation? When we meditate, we venture into the workings of our mind, our sensations like air blowing on our skin, our emotions, love this or frustrated about that, and thoughts. When is this all going to end? Mindfulness meditation asks us not to judge, but to be curious about what's going on in our minds, approaching our experience with warmth and kindness to ourselves and others. How do I practice mindfulness meditation? Mindfulness is simple. It's taking time to pause and breathe. This is powerful because when negative news comes blurring through the radio, pausing to take a breath will help you put things into perspective and turn off the radio instead of spiraling with worry and anxiety. Number 18, get artistic. Activities like poetry, music, and dance, among many others, enable you to express and explore your emotions, interact positively with others, and reduce your levels of stress. You might even impress yourself. Find an online class or just use whatever you already have at home. Try coloring mandalas. You can print them free online or order coloring books. Use color pencils or markers, whatever you already have. The kids will love this too. This is something we do very often in our house. I print off mandalas offline, and a lot of times we just sit and color and we listen to audiobooks or music while we're doing this. The kids love it, and then we hang them on the wall. It's, it's a lot of fun. Coloring a mandala helps relax and enhance meditation. Mandalas have several designs that grow outward. These represent harmony and fullness with the universe and mind. Coloring mandalas can promote relaxation, calm the nervous system, invoke positive energies, and balance body energies. After engaging in coloring a mandala, the mind gradually begins to relax, and there is room for processing thoughts and feelings that come into focus. Number 19, smile. Simple, but amazing, and it really works. I feel instantly better when I smile. It helps me to be kind to others, when people smile at me, it warms my heart and makes me feel like the world is a better place. So try to smile as much as possible. It's a tiny thing that can have a big chain reaction. It's an easy investment of your time and energy. It might be hard while you're out in the public wearing a mask, but people can see your smile through your eyes and feel your positive energy. Number 20, remember the benefits of global health. The coronavirus has canceled events, reduced or stopped travel, and dramatically minimized daily commute because of quarantine and work from home measures. The coronavirus is without a doubt affecting everyone in our daily lives, including our carbon footprint. It's a major plus that it's great for the environment. Decreased carbon emissions alone from the daily commute significantly improves air quality, not to mention all the other awesome benefits such as work-life balance and decreasing traffic congestion and road rage. Air quality has improved immensely in many areas all over the world. The people of India are able to see the Himalayan mountains for the first time in 30 years. Can you imagine? What a gift. And just like that, the world has completely changed. But there's always a silver lining. Each of us has much more control over this situation than we think. In this course, I outline 20 different ways to stay positive and build confidence during this time. What will your new normal look like in a month or even a year? The way to beat the coronavirus is to come out stronger and better than when it started.
If you want to keep learning and growing, I have created two more awesome courses. One is called Parenting During a Pandemic, and the other one is How to Work from Home with Kids. I've also created a Parenting Teens During COVID-19 downloadable toolkit. That bundle is only $29. We're in hard times. I'm giving a big pandemic discount of 60% off. So for $29, again, you get Parenting During a Pandemic, How to Work from Home with Kids, and a downloadable toolkit for parents and teens. Please check that out in my bio. I'd love it if you continue this course with me. Let's keep learning and growing together. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. Please message me. Let me know what you think about this course. Let me know if there's any other way I could help. Also, please subscribe to our channel so we can keep making free videos like this. So hit that red subscribe button and thank you so much for watching.